Hello, welcome. This is Esley Wright, and I am happy to be sharing with you feng shui tips for 2023. Happy Chinese New Year, and welcome to the Yin Water Rabbit 2023. And thank you for listening. This is normally a live presentation, but this year it's a recording, so I appreciate even more for those of you who are regular followers that you are coming back to hear my five tips for what you can do to manage the rabbit year and her energy, right? So thank you again for being here. I, again, for those who don't know me, I am Esley Wright. I'm a holistic interior designer, a feng shui specialist, and a sustainable living advocate. I have been doing what I've been doing for about 30 years, and the feng shui predictions is my secret sauce of analyzing everything that I can using all the different tools and modalities that I've got in my tool chest to try to figure out what's going on uh, in the year coming up so I can make some plans and give myself some easy to use tips on how to actually manage the energy going forward. And a couple of years ago, some colleagues and friends of mine had noticed that I was doing this for myself and asked me to share it. So I have started the tradition of sharing my five tips to manage the energy using my own analysis tools. And I call it a predictions because there's actually some energy that I put out there about what it is that I feel that's going to be going on. I look backwards at where we have come from energetically and I think about where we are and I help kind of figure out what I think is going to happen in the next year and how I can best give myself a foot up on what it is that I need to do to make it a good, good year. So I'm hoping that you get some benefit from this. And so my talk is going to be a little bit quick, right? Because I know everybody's time is very precious and I really appreciate you being here, but I would like to give us a little bit of a history to give us context of where we are. I wanna share where we are in the present moment. And then I'm gonna share those five tips. You're gonna to have to stay till the end to get the five tips and what you can do to make sure that this funny rabbit year is a great year for you. So first of all, the history is that this year we are in the year of the yin water rabbit, right? It's a very, very different energy this year of where we are. But why are we doing this? The reason I've even started doing the predictions and how I pull most of my information is because this way of looking at the world is comes from China. So feng shui and these predictions and this, this elemental way of looking at the world has done about 4,000 years ago. I mean, it's difficult to, to really pinpoint when it started, but they say about 4,000 years ago in China. And I put this up here because I think that it's kind of important for the Westerners to understand that 18.5% of the world population, which is a freaking lot, right? 1.44 billion people, Chinese people, actually believe that feng shui is an incredibly powerful tool and they mostly used in their life. Of course, during communist times, when it was actually not allowed and it was illegal to do it, they didn't. But the moment that was lifted, they all came back to actually using this in their day-to-day -day life. Something that is a little bit difficult for the Western mind to wrap around, and I'm always trying to, uh, to approach my feng shui clients, my holistic approach with this in a way to help the Westerners think about this. But my attitude is if this many people actually have been believing and following this for their own benefit, for such a long time, it's something to take notice of. And I put on here that India is very close behind in regards to 1.338 billion people, right? And they're saying that they're going to actually bypass China. They have their own secret sauce, which is very, very similar to this in regards to how they look at the world. So I'm saying the Western world needs to wake up a little bit. We are a little bit too cerebral and a little bit out of our bodies, not really connected to nature. So it's just a reminder that we're here because some other some other cultures have been looking at this and using this to their advantage. Maybe we should too. 
And what they do is they actually, for these thousands of years, have been actually collecting data. They use a, a bunch of different things uh, to analyze the energy of the year between the Chinese animals and the five elements uh, and the earthly branches. There's a lot of complex elements that they actually use. And I, I have been studying this for a long time and studied under a grand master. And I still feel like I'm just scratching the surface of the depth of this ancient practice and uh, looking at it from a way that I can try to make it benefit for my own life and my clients. But it is really what they do is they collected information and started to look at patterns. And when you look at patterns, it's much easier to predict what's going to happen in the future. Obviously, that makes a lot of sense, right? Because we do it in our own lives. So this is just another application. And something that I've really loved while I've been a holistic interior designer and a feng shui practitioner, and of course, has led me down the path of being my sustainable advocate, is because the five elements in nature <laughs> is a really big part of keeping them in balance is all about what they're thinking about. They very much part of their livelihood, their life, the way that they live, the way they eat, the way they think, the way they dress, the way they build their spaces. Everything is really done with one eye on nature. The five elements is a huge part of their culture and their life. And so it's something that I'm integrating into my work more and more. And the moment that it got uh, kind of touched me and educated to me, I was like, wow, that's right. And, and so much today we can see that the world and nature is out of balance and we need to be working to try to actually start focusing on that. So that is one of the big things that really helps motivate me and keep me on my purpose. And feng shui, for those that don't know, is really just the practice of arranging your environment to be in balance, to help bring in prosperity in all areas of your life. It is just being mindful of your built environment. Uh, and feng shui can be done uh, on many levels. It's often done, um, really used historically on the built environment, right? Your interiors, but it can be used uh, on exteriors. It can be done. I had a, a dear colleague who actually did the feng shui for the city of Amsterdam years ago. And so it can actually be done in a microscopic on top of your desk or in a mic, uh, macro, for example, in an entire city. So, but often feng shui is really just thinking about how to arrange your environment so it is in balance, right? And key here is we really can predict better when we learn from the past. We need to make sure that we don't forget where we come from, especially if we wanna figure out, navigate, and control as best as possible where we're going to. I really feel like this is kind of a smart uh, lifestyle thing to be doing. I'm always trying to figure out the lessons learned from everything from every single project and interaction that I have with a client to my own personal life. We can predict better when we learn from the past. So with that being said, the Chinese animals, there are 12 of them in the overall system of Chinese astrology. And the very first one in the system is the rat. <laughs> and we know 2020, a couple of years ago, very, very pivotal, very important year for all of us. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to start giving us just a little bit of where we're coming from. 2020 was a year of survival. It was the year of the rat. We all know that it was a bit of a tough year. I had my five tips and all of my predictions come out in January of the years, right? Just as we're just transitioning into the Chinese Lunar New Year, which is just about now, the end of January, the beginning of February. So I did not know that COVID was coming down and that we were having a global pandemic and we were going into confinement. But with these five tips, it was very interesting how in an undercurrent, it actually did support the people who did look at these five tips for 2020 on what it was to help them for the year of 2020. Collaborations, keep moving forward, clean up your papers, think long term, and spice up your life with color in your home. Those five tips helped a lot of my clients and myself survive 2020 
the year of the rat a little bit better. Then we moved into 2021, into the year of the ox, a massive shift, the second animal in the Chinese uh, system. And the ox was all about slowing down. He was about togetherness, staying calm, releasing and letting go, nurturing and growing. It was a year of grounding, which of course actually makes sense in a lot of ways. Actually, when we look at what happened in the world after the COVID, the next year really was a year of slowing down and really needed to reassess. So it's fascinating how you can see that, you know, going from the rat year that was very sick and spread disease and all of that, down to the ox year, how it was really about towing the ground and, and rebuilding things and slow and steady. And that was what 2021 was about, grounding. Then last year, 2022, was the year of the tiger. And that was the year of change, a very different energy going from the ox to the tiger. The tiger is bold and active. And it was a year really of boldness. It was a year to be super flexible, being able to need to pivot. It was a year that we needed to actually enhance our positivity, but we needed to be realistic about where we were going. And it was a year that I said home improvements were great to do last year. It was a year of bold action. You needed to kind of make movement. And from my own experience and those of all of my clients and everyone who's spoken about, 2022 was a tough year. It was a year of a lot of action. And it was a little bit too fast paced. We really had a radical shift going from the rat and then to the ox and then to the tiger. So now what are we going to have in 2023, leaving the year of the tiger? We are now heading into 2023, which is the year of the yin water rabbit. The yin water rabbit is a very different thing than anything that we've had before for the last couple of years. And mostly because I want to say yin, because the last three years, all of those animals, the rat, the ox, and the tiger were all yang energy. Yang energy and yin yang is kind of this, this uh, balancing system in nature, which is about the masculine and the feminine, light and dark, wet and dry. And so the last three years with the yang energy was all about active, upfront, hot uh, energy. And now we are going into a much more kind of uh, the yin energy is more about receiving softness, darkness, introspection. It's about submission. It is a totally different energy. So all of a sudden we're going from yang, yang, yang energy to yin energy. So the rabbit year this year is yin. The second thing is it's actually a water right? Now, interesting, we've had a lot of water. So the rat was a water year, the tiger was a water year, the ox was metal, but now we've got another water. So we've had an awful lot of water element going in in the last couple of years, and we have it again this year. Now, the water can be very auspicious. It can be a symbol of abundance and wealth, but it also has a level of changeability and unpredictability. Water does change, right? We have the, the flowing of a stream is very different than the torrential feeling of a waterfall, right? Stagnant water can be ill, right? So there's a lot of changeability and unpredictability with the water. So you have to actually be aware of that. It's happening this year as well. And then the rabbit. The rabbit and the Chinese believe, and one of the reasons why they have done this is because the years follow the characteristics of the animal. So rabbits are a very different animal than the last three that we've got. This is the first kind of cuddly, soft, cute animal that we've had in the system. Rabbits are incredibly well known for good fortune, right? The lucky rabbit's foot, right? And they are extremely well known for fertility. <laughs> so their energetic breeding makes them perfect. So this, you know, is one of the key characteristics of the bunny rabbits, right? But they're also known as calm and peaceful creatures. They work well in, in their, their groups. They're earnest and they're proud, but they also can be reactive and will escape when they need to. Right. So these are all the elements of what the water rabbit of this year is going to be. 
And I also wanted to share that the last water rabbit year we had was in 1963. The Chinese prediction system is a 60 cycle system. It has the 12 Chinese animals and the five elements. So you don't get the animal with the element except for once every 60 years. So the last water rabbit year was 1963. And the reason I say that again is we learn from the past and the Chinese have been following this for thousands of years. So in thousands of years, they had quite a few cycles to actually be able to predict things. So in 1963, a few key global things that took place. One, President Kennedy was assassinated in the United States. Two, Martin Luther King had the I have a dream speech. Three, there were medical advancements in transplants of human organs for the very first time that were successful. Huge change in the world of medicine. And the first woman went into outer space. All very, very big things in 1963. So it gives us a little bit of an indication of what could possibly be coming for us this year, right? So with all of these things that I've shared with you where we have come, and where we are right now, I want to share what I think this year is going to be about. I see that the Yin Water Rabbit year of 2023 is going to be a year of preparing. It's a year of opportunity. And there are five things that we need to be doing that we can manage this energy of this bunny rabbit <laughs> in the best possible way to maximize our own happiness, success, safety, right? The first thing is going to be to get clear. The second is to create a team plan. The third is to be consistent. Fourth is to help other people. And five is comfort is queen. So let me go into a little bit more detail with all of these. So this year, gaining clarity is going to be the most important thing. Really getting clear on your stuff, what you want, what you don't want, who, what, how, when, and your why. The clearer you are, the stronger your chances of finding your way to it. This is super, super important. We are so incredibly busy running around, but if you don't have clarity, you're jumping around. You're going to be reactive, and that is never the best way to be. We want to be proactive. We want to actually know what we're going to be doing, what we're fighting for, what, what all of our whys are. So between our family, our money, our career, our love life, you need to get clear. You need to figure this out. You don't want to be reactive. So this is the year gain clarity. Slow down, figure it out. Do your vision boards. I've got I've got workshops on vision boards. Get your vision board. Get your calendar out. Figure out what your dreams and your goals and your visions are and do it this year. Planting the seeds this year is going to be spring. Springtime is very powerful. Number two is about being a team player. Rabbits play in a team. You really need to know that life is a team sport. It is not meant to be solo. That is completely against all of what our society and our marketing is putting out there. Autonomy is a mistake. This, this incredible desire to be so independent and a silo is incorrect. From my humble opinion, I think we are designed to be part of a team, part of a tribe, part of a, a group, a collaboration. So this year, you need to become a team player. You need to figure out what, what team is your team? Who are your people? Make sure that you need to do this now. It's a life skill that I guarantee will help you find true success in all areas of your life. And I'm going to say, I never played a team sport when I was a kid, right? So I had to learn the hard way as an adult to learn how to be a team player. And I'm creating my own teams. I've got my sustainability advocacy team that I'm creating. But, you know, you find what your people are and go and create a team. We can do so much more together than we can ever do alone. So this is the year, the rabbit year, that is going to support you to actually become part of a team player. The third thing that you need to do this year is about consistency. Consistency with all of your actions is going to get you to the finish line faster. 
jumping all over the place, running around, going after that shiny penny is absolutely the wrong year to be doing that. You need to be consistent with your actions. This is linked back to getting clarity. Once you get clarity, it's much easier to be consistent. Find your one thing and be consistent. Number four, and this is really important this year, helping other people. We really, really need to, uh, and this is linked to being a team player, is actually putting ourselves not always in the first place. Now, I'm a big believer in self-love and taking care of myself and making sure that I'm strong so I can actually take care of the people that I love. However, with that, I also recognize the incredible power that I get and energy that I get when I help other people. We lift ourselves up as a whole when we help other people. And this doesn't mean to be just in charity or volunteer work. I know we all don't have time or energy for that, but it's making sure that you're looking at the world with eyes that are there, that when someone needs your help, you're there. Someone needs to paint their house. They can't pay to have somebody do it. <clears throat> like this image here, offer to help. Give up a Saturday afternoon to help a friend move into their apartment or to bring over a meal to your elderly relative, to make sure that you're available for somebody who is actually going through something. This world is a, a uh, you know so much better because we're interconnected. Everything is going to be better if we help each other. We get out of our own way and we really, really learn that we can improve things when we are helping each other. And it will bring a sense of peace and purpose to your life that I believe will really benefit you long term. And the last but not least is about comfort. This is the year. Comfort is queen. You need to create a comfortable and cozy home. It is about safety and coziness. Think about those bunny rabbits in their little burrows and they're all wrapped around each other and super cozy, comfortable. So this is the year. Get cozy. Make sure that it is the, the key to things. It's not about spending a lot of money, not necessarily about a good year to do huge renovations. It is a year to cozy. Make sure that you've got comfort. Comfort is queen. You can do this creatively and if you need some help, you always know that I'm there for you. So create your best year. The Yin Water Rabbit year has a lot of potential. There's a lot of positivity here. You know it's going to be a transition year. We know that. And this is about preparing. So with that, you have to also understand that it's not like it's going to be sunshine and roses immediately. The better we're moving towards a brighter future. I personally feel that's still another couple of years off, but we're moving in the right direction. And with the, the energy of the yin receiving soft, introspective, water, changeable, but prosperity rabbit that has some luck and a great year to start new things, this year has a lot of potential. Just make sure that you gain clarity, you become a team player, stay consistent, Get out of your own way and help other people when it's needed and just add some comfort to your home. With those five tips, I believe you're going to manage the bunny rabbit energy in an absolutely beautiful way that's going to bring you health, happiness, peace, and joy. And once you do all of that, I would love you to reach out to me and let me know how it's going. If you have any thoughts, any questions, I am always there. You can find me at holisticinteriordesigns.com. And I want to offer a couple special deals to you guys. Those that have actually listened to the end. <laughs> there are two special deals for you. One is a holistic feng shui home review, right? If your home is not feeling good right now, you don't like it, you feel out of alignment. If that has to do with the energy feeling bad, clutter getting stuck, not being able to do work in your home office or sleeping horribly. All of those things can be handled with a feng shui home review that I do in a very holistic manner. This is a special deal. You would need to use the code rabbit23 <laughs> in order to get this deal, but know that I'm doing this for you. And to do with the Chinese New Year, I'm also offering a personalized nine-star 
a key reading for you guys who want to know how the energy of the year is going to impact you and your life specifically. You have a Chinese animal. I am a horse, right? So I don't know what you are, but I have got all of this figured out. But the nine star reading is also about your elemental energy. You've got three energies that have to do with the elements at the core of who you are, the way you react under pressure, and how the world sees you. Understanding this changed my life, made me a better person, better at running my business, better in my interpersonal relationships, and really changed the way that I was able to deal with everything in my world. So I'm offering that as a special discount to you guys. Again, use the code RABBIT23 for the special discount of only 39, okay? So those are my deals for you, right? You've got the Holistic Feng Shui Home Review, if you want that, or the Nine Star Key Reading. And I'm just going to end right now saying thank you so much for listening. Happy Chinese New Year to the Yin Water Rabbit of 2023. Make sure that you do something today that your future self is going to be thankful for. I am Esley Wright, holistic interior designer, and I am so grateful that you've listened to me. I look forward to connecting. You can find me on holisticinteriordesigns.com or changeyourspace.info. Have a wonderful year and stay well.